"'Twas the night before Christmas, and with his parents and siblings fast asleep in their beds, little Timmy decided to sneak downstairs and open his presents early. He was filled with excitement as he began to open everything. But when he finally got to his own present, Timmy was left looking down at a cold, hard lump of coal. The room went cold, and he could hear the rattling of chains behind him. This year there would be no visit from Santa. For those who misbehave will only be greeted by the shadow of Saint Nicholas. The demon of Christmas. Krampus. <laughs> To many of us, Christmas means a time of joy, togetherness, and family. But if we're being honest as kids, it also meant no school and a bunch of presents. There are those, however, unfortunate enough to experience the dark side of Christmas. Those who never got their visit from Santa. Misbehave and you'll be on Santa's naughty list. But what if that list was more than just misbehaving children? What if that list was intended for someone else? There's nothing like tales of a demon who drowns, eats, and drags children off to hell to really get you into the Christmas mood. Jokes aside, Krampus is one of my personal favourites, and it's also a video that I've always wanted to come back to and improve upon. Stories of Krampus have appeared throughout Central Europe as far back as pre-Christian Alpine tradition. This area covers a host of countries from Austria, Germany, and Switzerland, to parts of France, Northern Italy, the Czech Republic, and Slovenia. Modern tales depict him as the not-so-friendly companion of Saint Nicholas or Santa Claus, who punishes the poorly behaved while Saint Nicholas rewards those who have been good. However, it may not have always been that way. When discussing Krampus, there are two distinct periods of time that give us entirely different stories. The initial period of pagan tradition, and then the period after of Christian tradition. We honestly don't know much about his earliest origin because most pagan traditions were either forgotten or absorbed into Christian traditions. The most common belief is that Krampus may have originated from a horn deity. And we know this extends further than just pagan beliefs, because horn gods have existed in multiple cultures across the world. There is a similarity between Krampus and the ancient Greek satyr, both being quite rowdy and mischievous, but one is clearly more evil than the other. In Old High German, the word Krampen meant claw, which could refer to a clawed monster, but just like everything else surrounding his origins, it's all pretty ambiguous. The closest connection we can draw between Krampus pre- and post-Christian Alpine traditions are pagan festivals that took place during the winter, similar to Yule or Winter Solstice. During these festivals, men would dress up in masks and animal furs and parade around villages being a nuisance, which is something they still do today, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So far, there's not been much to suggest that Krampus ever had anything to do with Christmas or Santa Claus, other than appearing at a similar time in the year. In both Austria and Germany, it wasn't uncommon for individuals to wear a devilish mask and make a nuisance of themselves during holidays which honoured Christian saints. This wasn't done as a tradition honouring Krampus, more so a pushback against the church, which had been phasing out these pagan beliefs and traditions. You can, however, make the argument that this would be the start of what we would see in the years that followed. If we go even further back, the closest thing we have to an origin for Krampus comes from a figure known in Austria as Perkta. She was mentioned very briefly by the Brothers Grimm, and the best way I can describe her is as a combination of Santa Claus and Krampus. Rather than having the concept of good and evil shown by two separate entities, Perkta represented both the reward and the punishment. Around midwinter, during what we would refer to as the Twelve Days of Christmas, or the Feast of the Epiphany, she would visit the homes of children. If they were good, then they would find a silver coin in one of their shoes the next morning. Sounds a lot like Saint Nicholas, right?
no, because if they were bad, she would slit open their bellies, remove their stomach and guts, and fill the cavity with straw and pebbles before sewing it shut again. This also extended to anyone who ate anything other than meat, fish, or gruel during the day of her festival. To symbolize this duality, she appeared as a beautiful woman dressed in white, and other times as a withered old hag. Accompanying her were a group of spirits known as the Perkton, who just like Perkta also appeared in two different forms. The beautiful Perkton, who brought with them good fortune, and the ugly Perkton, who had fangs, tusks, and horse tails, not too different from Krampus himself. The ugly Perkton were used to ward off spirits and demons in one's home, similar to Halloween, but in December. This led to men dressing up as these ugly Perkton and going from house to house driving out evil spirits, in what was known as the Perkton Lauf, or the Perkton Run. The church then seen these celebrations as a demonstration of immoral behaviour trying to stop these runs from taking place, but many Austrian villages just refused to comply, whilst others chose to dress someone up as Saint Nicholas to accompany them on these runs as somewhat of a compromise. Around the 11th century, stories of Saint Nicholas began to gain popularity, and this continued until the 16th century, where the form of Krampus that we know today really began to manifest. The church, still locked in a battle with the Austrian people over the Perkton, decided to just outright ban the Perktonlauf. Not willing to give up entirely, the people then created a new creature, similar to the Perkton in appearance, but with a few key changes. This creature would now serve Saint Nicholas, and would be known as Krampus, a hairy, horned, and hooved demonic figure, with sharp fangs, long claws, and an even longer tongue. At this point in time, he wasn't considered the only one of his kind. The Krampus referred to a race of monsters that appeared during the Yule period. During this period, Christians would celebrate Saint Nicholas. December 6 was known as Saint Nicholas Day. Much like modern day Christmas, Saint Nicholas would deliver presents to those who had been good. Those who were not so good would get either a lump of coal or a twig. To the church, the idea of these Krampus figures was still a symbol of heathenism, and so they decided to assimilate this belief into their own existing winter ceremonies. Krampus was then paired with Saint Nicholas. One symbolized good, and the other evil. He would then become associated with the idea of the Christian devil. He was given chains to symbolize the binding of the devil by the church. He now carried around birch sticks that he would use to beat misbehaving children with. On his back, he had a basket or a sack that he would throw those naughty children in when dragging them off to hell. If you were extremely poorly behaved, you may even be drowned or eaten. The night before Saint Nicholas Day now became Krampusnacht, meaning Krampus night. December 5th was the day this demon was allowed to roam the streets and villages. It was no longer Saint Nicholas giving you a twig or a lump of coal. He was only concerned with the good children. The punishment of the rest fell to Krampus. It was fairly common for the church to integrate ideas and traditions from other cultures into their own when attempting to convert those from a different faith. And it does make sense. Just turning up on someone's doorstep and telling them to stop believing in what they do because they go into hell normally elicits a negative reaction. Instead, showing them that there is a common ground in your beliefs is much more effective. In this case, it was more so the Austrian people who adapted their beliefs into something more palatable to the church. And so the story of Saint Nicholas and Krampus is a good example of how a heathen belief was integrated, despite the major differences. The tradition of Saint Nicholas Day went through quite a major shift as a result of this. Going from Saint Nicholas leaving you a twig if you were poorly behaved, to being dragged off to hell by this giant demon goat monster. But if you were lucky, maybe you'd just be eaten or drowned in a lake. Quite the tonal shift. By the 16th century, stories of Saint Nicholas began to be replaced. He now became Santa Claus, deriving from his Dutch name Sinterklaas, or Father Christmas if you live in the UK. Stories of Krampus remain largely the same, and December 5th was still considered a Krampus night in many countries. 
With Christmas being celebrated on the 25th, it's only natural to then want to move Krampus Night to Christmas Eve for those outside of the Alpine region, and that's why you may see this in various stories and movies, despite these celebrations and festivals taking place in early December. These celebrations can vary depending on the region. They often involve wearing a wooden mask, dressing up in fur, and attempting to look as terrifying as possible. In some towns it's more humorous, and in others it's slightly more scary, but it's all mostly done in good fun. The most popular of these traditions is the Krampuslauf, or the Krampus Run, which is essentially the same as the Perktenlauf. Groups of people dress up as Krampus wearing large bells so they can be heard as they roam the streets in packs accompanied by a Saint Nicholas. What exactly they do depends on how they're feeling. Some just scare children and passers-by, some throw snow at them and others whip them around the back of the leg. Then you have those who visit houses given presents, and in exchange they're given schnapps and brandy. So it's pretty much just adult trick-or-treating, and it's also a pretty good excuse to walk around being a massive douche for a day. In parts of Austria, twigs would be painted gold and left around the house all year round as a reminder for children to behave. In the 1800s, Krampus could be found on greeting cards, postcards, and on the wrappers of candy. These depictions were rather odd and often quite distasteful. They feature Krampus as a more devilish figure with a sexual undertone, and this stems from those in large cities never really seeing these traditions. All they had to go by was the word of the church, who equated Krampus to the devil. In terms of his story, these images do make sense but it's not hard to imagine why some wouldn't find them suitable. It's also why over the years they've gone from frightening to more comical, in order to appeal to a larger audience. What's nice to see is that these festivals and Krampus runs still take place today, and not just in towns and cities within Austria and Germany, but all around the world, even popping up in parts of North America. There's no doubt that stories of Krampus and those predating him have a dark tone to them, but to say that he's just evil doesn't really tell the whole story. Before they were Christianized, the Perktons served as protective spirits, and Krampus only really came to as Saint Nicholas's companion as a way to keep these traditions alive. Even then, he merely punishes those who were deemed as deserving. He doesn't commit acts of evil against the innocent, and therefore he can be seen as representing a necessary evil. For many, this whole spectacle was and still is a time of fun and expression, even today, families take their children to these events and festivals. To them, Krampus is more of a Disney villain than a terrifying demonic story. To me, Krampus and Saint Nicholas represent our very own nature. We can be good, and we can be evil. But in order for society to function, you need incentive for the good, and you need consequence for the bad, even if that is in the form of a hairy demonic goat monster. If just like me, you can't get enough of Krampus, then why not check out our original story, Krampus Night? And if you're lucky, episode 2 of Dark World may even be out before the end of the year. But I wouldn't hold your breath. Unless you're being drowned by Krampus, because in that case, you probably want to hold it as long as you can. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained, wishing you all a very merry Krampus Night?